Welcome to the Davis Newscast for Friday, January 11th, 2019. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. Today, Friday, January 11th, the Davis Division of the Royal St. Christopher and Davis Police Force hosted its annual New Year celebration service at the Charleston Police Station's Recreation Room. The theme of the celebration was Police and the Community Taking Back Our Society. It saw remarks by Premier of Davis, the Honorable Mark. Brantley. Premier Brantley registered the government's fullest support to the police force. I can think of no better thing to do and no better place to be than to be here with you giving thanks. The truth is that as the incident with Corporal Michael demonstrates, you the men and women of the police force put your lives on the line every single day. It is sometimes uncertain as you come to work and as you go out about your business, what is going to happen? I am fairly certain that Corporal Michael did not anticipate that he would have been shot carrying out his duties on that Christmas Eve night just less than a month ago. But he was shot. And but for the grace of God, it could have been a lot worse. And so it perhaps captures why we ought to give thanks and why we ought to get together and why this tradition that has been started before my time, but continues even now, is important. Divisional Commander of the Royal St. Christopher and Davis Police Force, Davis Division, Superintendent Lyndon David, also delivered brief remarks. In giving his report, Superintendent David stated that there was a slight increase in reported crimes in 2018. Our detection rates are as follows. 2015, we had 99 crimes were reported, which represented 52.94. 2016, 114, which represents 56.43. 2017, we had 92, which represents 47.91%. And 2018, we had 105, which represents 51.98%. I believe that as a division, we are doing very well. The invocation was done by Force Chaplain Erickson Cumberbatch. The feature address was delivered by Venerable Dr. Alson Percival. In related news, Premier the Honorable Mark Brantley has asserted that any strategy devised by the National Security Strategy Formulation Committee has to address crime in high and low places. The Premier was at the time speaking at a meeting between the committee and stakeholders in Nevis on Wednesday, January 9th. I feel sometimes that we are so absorbed with violent crime because that is what grabs the headlines and we forget that there are a host of other crimes that also need to be addressed. So crime of all kinds, I think, has to be addressed. And I'm a firm believer that small crimes, if unaddressed, sometimes lead to larger crimes as people from a young age develop a sense of impunity and feel that they can break the law with no consequence. So I think that crime across the board has to be addressed. Violent crime certainly is the one that puts most fear into the community, and that too has to be addressed. But I would want the remit to be as wide as possible so that we develop strategies for crime. The Premier also expressed the hope that education would be a part of the strategy to reduce and prevent crime. When I say education in a broad sense, uh, in my time, for example, and I know that it is apparently old fashioned to say things like that, but in my time, things like good manners were important. Things like civility and how we speak to each other, all of those things were important. In fact, all of those things were taught to us from a very young age in school. Good morning, good afternoon. People may well ask, What's, what does that have to do with crime? But I feel that we have experienced over the last three decades or so a coarsening of our societies, a coarsening of the debate and the discussion, a, a, a lack of respect in dealing with each other, in treating with each other, whether you're in authority or not. And I think the result of that, again, has been a slow erosion of the moral fabric that has traditionally bound us together. I believe that we need to go back and find a way to recreate what we used to have, where we were our brother's keeper and we were our sister's helper. And so it is my hope, members of the committee, that you will find a path for us and that that advice that we are waiting on will come 
and that we will get a sense from that advice as to the strategies that we can deploy to break the back of this very difficult issue. Premier Brantley also used the opportunity to express appreciation to the members of the National Security Strategy Formulation Committee chaired by Dwyer Astefan. Thank you for your, your diligence and your commitment and your service to country. Mr. Astefan, of course, is perhaps best placed because he was a former Minister of National Security. So he would have seen it from all angles and he would have been there, I think, at a time when the difficulties started to manifest themselves. And so he really has an opportunity now to use that uh, wisdom that he would have acquired having led that particular ministry and to now bring that to bear on this report and these uh, recommendations that we hope will come. Junior Minister of Health, the Honorable Hazel Brandy Williams, has hit the ground running in 2019 by being one of the first persons to join the fully integrated training fit wellness centers weight loss campaign, a part of the NGO's non-communicable diseases NCD prevention action plan. According to the health minister, she has decided to be the center of this important campaign. We cannot expect persons to change without we ourselves being a part of that change. And so I have volunteered to start the program and to lead from the front. And I would want to share my experience with the general public. I am only human and so I think I might <laughs> slip here and there. But the whole idea is to get persons moving, to make persons aware of the importance of eating right, of of exercising so that we can eliminate some of the non-communicable diseases that are plaguing our community. It is the fact that 80% of our adult population are either hypertensive, hypertensive or are suffering from diabetes. We want this figure to become non-existent as close to zero as possible. David Walwin is the director of Fit Wellness Center. Today is uh, assessment day. Uh, as you know, as we talked about this national weight loss campaign, the minister have decided to lead the charge in this very important initiative. And I gotta uh, say, Minister, I am so extremely grateful <laughs> uh, to you that you have decided this is gonna be a lot of pressure uh, on you. Uh, for the media to follow her. We're going to follow her, follow her training, um, her aches and the pains as she goes through this program. But I just, I just want to just commend you for leading by example. And the theme of our national weight loss campaign is be the change. You know, we cannot ask someone to do something without us willing uh, to do it ourselves. And so we have to take an individual responsibility. And so the minister have decided that and so today we're going to be assessing a program over the next couple of weeks, diet, we're going to do a health screening uh, for all uh, the folks in the, in the Ministry of Health. Also present were Abigail Cozier-Douglas and Shalisa Martin-Clark of the Ministry of Health. I'm just here to show my support and sol solidarity to the Minister as she embarked on this very exciting journey and also to use the opportunity to encourage others to join the movement. Persons can register free of charge to participate in the weight loss campaign by calling 869-667-0079 or email info at lakehealthandwellbeing.com. Still to come, Prime Minister Harris meets with Republic Financial Holdings and Scotiabank representatives. The details after this break. Welcome back. Urologist Dr. Dwayne Thwaites is issuing a call for men in St. Kitts and Nevis of age 40 and older to take advantage of the free prostate cancer screenings which will be offered on Saturday, January 12th. Dr. Thwaites and his team of urologists spoke to us on Thursday, January 10th at the Alexandra Hospital, noting how the initiative has helped men in St. Kitts and Nevis over the last 13 years. It's been a long haul and um, we're able to be to mature into something that is very good. Our data is getting better and better. There is absolutely a decrease in the incidence of prostate cancer as we go further and further out. 
Um, the abnormalities have stabilized. We're looking at uh, 10 to 12 percent abnormalities. Even though our number of um, patients has increased um, um, to a very high number, last year we went as far as 598, and the year before we were 578. Men older than 35 are also encouraged to take advantage of Saturday's free screening if they have a strong family history of prostate cancer. Keep in mind it's every year, so even with um, normal results, both normal rectal exam and normal PSA, it is something that needs to be done annually. So if you're, just to be clear, if your results were normal the year prior, uh, we do hope and expect to see you this year if you're on island and available to come. So um, yeah, we, we definitely, um, we do our best to try to accommodate everybody quickly and, um, and we're pretty efficient in the process. So we look forward to seeing you on Saturday. And just to remind those who maybe haven't been there before, those who are returning and what the process is, there's a, a two-step process to the, to the screening. Um, it'll be a, a blood test that'll be done, which is the PSA, screening for prostate cancer. But as well, you should also be getting the, the physical exam where we actually examine the prostate to make sure there's no lumps or nodules on there that are suspicious for, for cancer because you can have a normal blood test and an abnormality on the prostate that needs to be further evaluated. I think this is my 10th or 11th time here in Nevis. I'm happy to be back once again, and we love staying at Nisbet and really offer our thanks to them for their hospitality. Um, numbers have been growing. We've been screening a lot of men on the island for a lot of years, and I think it's a great uh, you know, public health project that Dr. Thwaites has put together and look forward to continuing to support him year after year and island after island. On Saturday, registration will open at 6 a.m. at the Occasions Center and close at noon. It takes about uh, three seconds to do a good digital rectal examinations, and we have all experts. Uh, um, these guys have been doing this year on, every day, every day, and they've done thousands and thousands of <laughs> prostate exams. So, you know, any little nod nodularity or anything on the prostate, they should be able to pick it up quickly. And then the follow-up care is so important that it's done here at Alexandra, and for those in St. Kitts, um, we do do the follow-up. The Ministry of Health, including the Alexandra Hospital, is once again partnering with Urology Associates to host the free screenings. Other sponsors include Dr. Patricia Bartlett, Carib Buries, Flo, Von Radio, Reliable Motors, Andy Leibert of Multiline, Lauren Daniel, Paris Car Rental, Finished Touch, Nisbet Plantation Beach Club, Sunshine's Bar and Grill, Isilma Philip Martin, Vincent Perkins Water Taxi Service, and CMOS Taxi Service. A release from the press unit in the office of the Prime Minister says Prime Minister the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris had a cordial and a productive discussion on Wednesday, January 9th with senior representatives of the Republic Financial Holdings Limited and representatives of Scotiabank on the purchase of Republic Financial Holdings of Scotiabank's operations in the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union. The Republic Financial Holdings delegation comprised Ronald Harford Chairman and Ian de Souza, Principal Advisor at Advice Financial Company Limited. Scotiabank was represented by Brendan King, Senior Vice President of International Banking, and David Parks, Managing Director for the Eastern Caribbean. Hilary Hazel, the Financial Secretary in the Government of St. Kitts and Nevis, and Cheryl Hobson, Director in the Office of the Prime Minister, supported Prime Minister Harris and at the meeting. Republic Financial Holdings announced last November that it had entered into an agreement to acquire Scotiabank's banking operations in Guyana, St. Martin, and the Eastern Caribbean territories of St. Kitts and Nevis, Angola, Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. According to D'Souza, not one single staff member of Scotiabank will be displaced. They will not be affected in any form or fashion and their remuneration will remain whole. King said it was very important to Scotiabank that its customers and employees be handled with care, adding that this is important in order to ensure that there is no disruption of any kind. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. Thank you for viewing.